In photography, two big words that you should understand are lighting and exposure. Now, what is lighting exposure? What's the difference? Is there a difference? I'm going to show you in this video. In my own words, lighting is having the ideal amount of light on your subject. It can mean just like light in general, it can mean different colors of light, but to me, it's about having the ideal amount of light. For example, lighting would be the fact that there's no light on my face right now and you can hardly see it. Is that better? Maybe not. We're here at Blue Mountain, Collingwood, Ontario. Uh, we do this like at least once a year to go snowboarding. This is the recovery day, kind of just chilling until we go back to Toronto. There's so much space here. There's just always so much space. Oh, I wish I could be here more often. I love nature. The temperature is really good. It's a good time of the year. No, I lie. It's not. It has nothing to do with the time of the year. It's just we got lucky. It's warm. It's kind of warm right now. What is this? These like groundhog holes. So, exposure. What is exposure? It's basically the amount of light that you allow to get into your camera, hit the sensor of your camera, or if you still shoot film, the film of your camera. So this is what exposure is. Exposure would be the fact that you can see the sky. The settings that I put the video on made it so that you can make out that the sky is still blue. If it was overexposed, it would be white. For example, what's that look like? Darker? How's the sky? Dark blue? All right, let me twist it the other way. Hopefully, is that too bright now? I don't even know. I don't even know where we're at right now, but I'm gonna keep it like this. Actually, I'll make it a little bit darker just in case. So right now, I'm adjusting my exposure so that I can get the right amount of lighting so that you can see my face while I'm doing this vlog. Uh, how's that looking right now? Is that good? Here's two pictures of a tool shed in the back of the chalet. Can you tell me the difference? In the background of the top picture, the sky looks normal. So in photography terms, that means it's properly exposed. But the tool shed itself is way too dark. You can't see what the doors look like and it creates this contrast and a, a focal point that you don't really want. The problem with this is the sun is facing the wrong direction altogether. If you want to take a picture of something, let's say this tool shed, you should probably wait till the sun's on the other side so you can see what the doors look like, what the whole tool shed looks like, instead of the sun casting this really huge shadow and you can't see anything. Now in the bottom picture, it's the opposite. I changed the exposure so that you could see the tool shed, so that you can see what the doors and the locks look like and the wood. But the problem here is, because I made that adjustment, now the sky is way too exposed or overexposed. Now there's certain ways to be over or underexposed so that you intentionally do that in an artistic way. I'll give you some examples. You have to be conscious of where your light is coming from. For example, it took me like 15, 20 minutes just to set up these two lights because then one used to be here and one used to be there, there, there. And I had to figure out what positions and at what proximity is ideal for the lighting on my face. And it, I'm sure it's still not even that great. But in relation to the photos, you have to be more conscious to the fact that the sun is not facing the right direction. Either wait for it to come around or take a different shot. Photography is like coffee. What the fuck does that mean? Think of your coffee as your shot, your subject. Now normally you might think that coffee is black, but it's actually really dark brown. And I want you to think of your milk as your light. When there's no light, for example, like the coffee, 
you don't see anything. You don't know that it's brown. It's just dark or black. But when you add light, it becomes what it truly is. It shows its true colors. It shows its true colors. <laughs> when you put milk or cream in your coffee, what happens? It gets lighter and it also exposes the fact that it's brown. And that's the exact same thing as lighting your subjects, i.e. these lights. Now exposure would be the exact same thing as adding more milk, adding even more milk, adding even more milk, till it's pretty much the same color as the milk. So just for this example's sake, let's say you do take milk in your coffee. Whatever amount of milk you like would be the ideal exposure. Now the more milk you put, the more milk you put, the more milk you put, it'll be overexposed. Because what you're doing is putting too much light, too much light, too much light, too much light, until it's basically all light. Earlier I spoke about how you can creatively use lighting and exposure for your benefit. So here's two examples. For both examples, just like in the chalet, I used very strong midday light to create these photographs. The difference between these photographs and the chalet photograph is its intention. The top picture was actually taken outside. It was taken at the Yorkville exotic car show, something like that. It was taken midday, super strong light. I noticed that the cutoff for the light was in the middle of the car. I took the opportunity to take it a different route. And in this case, I used the darkness and the contrast in my favor, knowing that it would eliminate all the minor details, all the people, all the other cars, all the buildings and stuff. And all you see is this nice bright yellow car on the street. You have no idea where it is, but there's something interesting about it. And I did the exact same thing here at my good friend's daughter's baptism. So it might look like I did a hell of a lot of Photoshop on this photo, but really that's how it looked like. Obviously the, the church is in the background, there's people in the background, there's wood and other details, but I knew that the light was strong enough that I could create a shadow and eliminate all those details, except the absolute most important ones, which is the priest, my friend, and his daughter. And I think it created a very interesting composition while also telling a story. If you have any questions on how I edited these photos, link me up. All right, so what did we talk about today? We talked about lighting, exposure. Speaking of lighting and exposure, right now is probably one of the worst times to do this vlog because the light right now at, what is it, one o'clock? Like midday is so strong it's gonna be really hard to get the proper exposure of the shadows of my face or the shadows in general and the whiteness of this wall the light is just that strong I mean, you want to do it like right in the morning or close to sundown sun up to su or sundown best times one lighting and exposure is Two, exposure is the amount of light you let into your camera to get the shot that you want to take. Three, lighting is basically light and how you use it. Four, if you're on automatic, get on manual right now. You're gonna learn so much. And finally, number five, it's really tough to shoot with really strong sunlight during midday. I mean, if it was cloudy right now, then, you know, it'd be great, it would be better, but there's no clouds right now and it's the sun is just beaming hard down on my face and on everything else obviously <sighs> hey guys i hope you learned something today in today's episode congratulations you played yourself i hope you guys learned something in today's episode and if you did and you like the blog again please hit subscribe hit the like button hit the bell button. I'm A12T, at A12T on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, at official A12T. And we'll see you next week for another episode. See you guys.